Hey, Aubrey, how's it going? I am great. How are you today? <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> we have a really cool topic today. Um, we're going to be talking about some English words that are used in India that are not used in other English speaking countries. Um, and we're going to explain the equivalents in American English and talk about whether or not you should use these words on the IELTS exam. Um, this is one of those episodes that Aubrey and I just can get super dorky about because it's so fun. It. It's <laughs> really? so really fun. Yeah. I love it so much. Like I love anytime when I learn something new, right? Yeah. I, yes. I speak English, but this is new to me. So if I'm able to travel to India, I love that. Now I'm going to understand what someone means when they say some of these things, because these totally. are things that are said in English in India and, but I've never heard them before. So this is really fun. Okay. Um, so we had a comment from a YouTube subscriber guys. If you haven't checked out our channel, IELTS energy TV, go check that out guys. You can see videos of all the podcasts on there. See what me and Aubrey look like. We're amazing. Uh, so subscribe to IELTS energy TV on YouTube. And guys, remember, we also have a free IELTS quiz for you and we made free resources to help you prepare. So go to all ears, slash my score to check that out guys. Um, um, all right. So I'm going to read the comment from the subscriber. Uh, there are many words which are only used in Indian English, but British speakers don't know about these words. Can I use such words in IELTS or should I use only these words which are used in English speaking countries? Um, and then he included a YouTube video for us to check out some Indian English words. Aubrey and I did some research on our own. Um, so yeah, the, the long, we'll get into examples, but long story short, no, especially his question, right? British, he said, British speakers don't know these words. Well, American English speakers won't know them either. Right. Can so, confirm. <laughs> right. If you, who is the examiner? That's what you have to think about. Will the examiner know these words? No. Well, it will count poorly for vocab. Right. Exactly. When it comes to both American English British English, New Zealand, Australia, all of that slang, we all pretty much know it. We hear it on TV. We hear it on yeah. movies. We hear other native speakers use it. You can use that on yeah. the exam, right? The examiner is going to be familiar with it. But if it's this kind of, uh, you know, words that are not used by English speakers, most likely the examiner won't be familiar with it. All of these we're going to talk about, I had never heard before. So if I were the examiner, <laughs> I would not know what you meant. And I would assume you were making a mistake. Exactly. Exactly. So it will decrease your vocab score guys. Um, I would say if you know for sure that this is a term used in a primarily English speaking country, right. Um, then like go for it. British English, American English, like Aubrey said, they're all fine. Um, but let's get into some of these examples. So the first one we found was, and I'm going to put a caveat in here. If we are wrong, <laughs> if you do not say this in Indian English, we apologize in advance. Aubrey and I tried really hard to do the best research we could. <laughs> Google so, may have lied to us. <laughs> <laughs> so the first example we found of something different is that Indian in Indian English, you might say alliance instead of what we say marriage, which is very interesting because alliance is an English word. We do use it, but it does not mean marriage. Right. A marriage is an alliance of sorts, but if ever we right. say alliance, I always think of like games, strategy games, where I'm going to make an alliance with someone and now we're on the same team, right? Now I have right. your loyalty. So it, it has a different meaning for sure. Well, that word ally, right? It comes right. from alliance, right? So it's like these friends that help you with stuff. Like that's, <laughs> that's an ally. Um, it could be more serious. Like we talk about uh, in World War II, right? The allies were the people on the side of America and whatever. Um, so yeah, definitely a lot different than marriage. Uh, in British English and American English, we say marriage, not alliance. Um, and here's like, here's the big danger is that this word does exist in English. It just doesn't mean what you think it does. And so again, that really brings down the vocab score. All right. What's the next example, Aubrey? Yes. Yeah, so I would say short sleeves for any shirt like this that has a short sleeve. And in India, they say half sleeves, which is interesting because there are, we'll say three quarter length sleeves, which seems yeah. so crazy, but for a sleeve that goes to here, but we never say half sleeves. 
And some of these, like um, I saw instead of shorts, you might say like short pant or half pant in Indian English. And that's something I heard in South Africa mm -hmm. as well. Um, so like some of these terms do exist in far flung places <laughs> where English is used. But again, like you have to consider where you're at. If you're taking the exam in North America, in England, in Australia, then you need to focus on like that country's English more than anything. Right. Um, you say half sleeves, they're going to think, oh, they meant short sleeves. They said right? that wrong. Totally. Vocabulary score. Um, and the next one is quite different too. Uh, so we would say bus stop or bus station, two different things, right? A bus station is bigger. It's a building. A bus stop is just like a bench where a bus stops. Um, but we read that in Indian English, they might say bus stand. That sounds more British to me, but according to the resource I read, in England, they also say bus stop or bus station. So bus stand, I would understand what you mean, but again, it is not quite right. Right, exactly. If we ever have a stand in the United States, it's like a hot dog stand, like a, a small <laughs> food stand where you're going to totally. buy some kind of snack. That's a stand, right? Right, like in farmer's markets, right? They're all like stands, all the little booths, Dolls, we could say. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally exactly. different. Um, all right, this next one is also awesome. Aubrey, can you tell us about the next one? Yes, so in India, they would say trial room, and we say a fitting room where you would try on clothes. It makes sense to say trial room. I'm taking this clothing and for a trial, <laughs> totally. but I still... I, I, as the examiner, I might struggle to now, oh, wait, what are they talking about? I definitely would use fitting room if you want to talk about the place where you try on clothes in a store. Yeah, um, because the first the first uh, connected idea that comes to mind, if I hear a student say trial room, I think you mean court. A courthouse. You know, a like a courthouse. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. a trial, the primary definition for that for us is like the whole process in court where you are in front of a judge. Maybe you committed a crime or something like that's a trial, right? So totally different connotation in our English, but I like it. I mean, Me it does make sense. We just don't say that you guys. Um, another really classic example that I would understand because I've heard it before um, replacing Mr. with sir or replacing uh, miss or Mrs. with ma'am. Like I hear a lot of students from that region, not just India, but the surrounding areas as well, say like ma'am Jessica, right? Like that's mm. not, we don't really say that. That's not a title we use. Right, exactly. And if we use sir as a title, it means they're knighted in England, right? <laughs> sir Elton John, we can call him <laughs> sir because he was knighted by the queen, but nobody else gets that title. <laughs> sir Paul McCartney. Sir Paul McCartney. Oh. <laughs> love that they are knights knighted um yeah guys so we say sir but not how you're saying it in indian right. english right it's not um it's not a title like that like if i'm being polite to someone older than me and i don't know their name i i say sir still i try to be very respectful um and i'm like oh sorry sir right if someone's mm -hmm. older than me but it's not if i know their name i don't say sir yeah, that's right. It is interesting too. And every now and then I'll hear like a kid say, Hey, mister. And then if it's my kid, I'll be like, Ooh, that's not as polite. Let's say, excuse me, sir. <laughs> or maybe in old movies, you'd be like, Hey, mister. What's up? So I was just like, I'm picturing like, like newsies, you know, yes. like if you're some kid selling papers in the 1930s <laughs> in Brooklyn, mister. you're like, Hey, mister, want to <laughs> buy some gum? Like, totally. I don't know. <laughs> We don't the more talk. polite is to say, excuse me, sir, can you help me? <laughs> hey, mister. That sounds so weird, guys. Don't say that. Um, so another example, and this is interesting because familial relations uh, in India, the connections to family are much stronger than here. Right. Um, and I know in a lot of countries, calling someone brother and sister does not necessarily indicate family or auntie. Auntie is like an older friend, woman of the family in a lot of countries. Um, but again, in American English and British English, those relations are not how we we don't say that. Right. So mm -hmm. we read in India, you might say cousin brother, for example, instead of cousin. Um, so, again, like that is incorrect. 
Yes, exactly. Right. And this can be really tricky. Religion becomes involved too. A lot of people will say brother or sister for someone who's yeah. part of their religion. Have you heard that? Yeah. This is something to keep in mind to recognize about your culture and recognize the examiner may not be familiar with your culture, your religion. Totally. And so to be sure to use those familial titles that the examiner will be familiar with. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Familial, familiar. Those are, that's a great minimal pair. Um, okay. We have two more great examples for you. So in English, we say a uh, pinky promise or pinky swear. I, I still do this because it's funny, but it's mostly kids do it. So if you want somebody to promise something like I will take you to the airport and you don't quite believe them, you're like, pinky swear. And then, and then you like do this, Link right? Pinkies. <laughs> That's a pinky swear or a pinky promise. So, um, in India, some people might say mother promise, which would sound completely incorrect to me. If I'm an examiner, I would have no idea what that meant. Right. Exactly. So you can either just say promise. If you want to emphasize how much you really mean it, you can yeah. say either I really promise, or like you said, I pinky promise. So or I swear, or I swear. Yeah. I, swear. I say that if I like really want to indicate Emphasis. I'm serious. Yeah. Interesting. Which is kind of idiomatic. It's weird slang because mm -hmm. swearing is also cursing. Like I don't I swear. I don't really swear, but I swear I will do this. <laughs> Cause swear also means promise. Right. Oh, English. Okay. Last one. Uh, what's the last example, Aubrey? Yeah. So after someone does something for you, we would say no problem. Don't worry about it. Something like that. And in India, they say mention not like oh. we'll say don't mention it, but we wouldn't say mention not. That's delightful. It is delightful. I like that. I might but we don't that say one. that. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, but don't say it. So again, guys, um, use your common sense. All right. If you think it's something the examiner won't be familiar with or won't know, don't say it. Don't write it. Okay. Um, you have to be strategic here. Don't be stubborn and be like, well, this is how we say it. You have to say it's correct. Like, no, I don't. Um, so guys, just keep the examiner in mind when you're choosing your vocab. And if we are wrong, comment on the YouTube yes, channel, guys. Let us know. Uh, this is episode 1176 and we'll be on IELTS Energy TV on YouTube. Don't be mad. We're trying our best, but do leave a comment to kindly teach us something. And remember, go to allersenglish.com slash my score and take our free IELTS quiz, guys. You get your estimated IELTS band score in five minutes. All right. Awesome. Aubrey, thanks so much. This was super fun. Yes, yeah, really fun. I'm excited to read the comments on this. I would love I if you could tell us other words that are used. You'd like, I'd love yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, awesome. we should do a follow up. We should do a part two. That'd mm -hmm. be cool. Yes. Leave more in the comments and we'll follow up on it. So fun. All right, Aubrey. Well, have a good rest of the week and I'll see you next time. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.